Welcome back to part 10 of this video tutorial series. In this one we're going to build a basic equipment list. We could use the Core RPG one, which has got a lot of functionality, but we really don't need all that functionality and I want to build something from scratch and put in a couple of basic uh, use cases, where we for, mostly for single use items, um, but we're also building a framework that will um, support potions um, for healing of luck, stamina, and magic points. So let's have a look at our character sheet. So we've got here our equipment list, uh, which is a window list, uh, basically the same as skill and spells and weapons and armor. Uh, we've got the class name as equipment detail. Our drop class will just be equipment. Uh, and we've got a name, and we've also got the data source, which has to start with a full stop. Okay, let's have a look at equipment. Equipment we basically copied uh, spell or skill or um, weapon or armor, all of those. And what we've got here is we've got our link, our name, our record lock, our close button, a label consumable, a checkbox. So checkboxes stored in the database is either a one for checked and a zero for unchecked and then the description field. We do have some code on here which is associated with the record lock button and that's to lock these fields to make them all read only. The big one here that's different from the other ones is this consumable button. Let's have a look at the detail field. Alright, so on our detail field we've got a name, we've got a number of items, uh, a, a units or count, and then we've got a link field. So our number of units, actually let's start with the class itself, nothing on there. Um, we can just see its equipment detail and that's that's all that we've got there. So on the equipment units, this is a clickable field, so on double click, let's set node car, which is our character sheet ID. Let's set the node for the button itself. Let's retrieve the name field. Let's, sorry, the name field here is the character's name. So we're pulling that from node car. The equipment name we're pulling from node button, which is this one. Equipment units is from here. And equipment consumable, it's all in this same node, however, Equipment consumable is not displayed in this particular view. It is on equipment. It's this checkbox. It's not here, but it's still accessible in the database. Then we're going to set the icon even when the gem is uh, rolling for that character. Now we're going to do a lookup. Um, so if n equipment units, so if this field here is greater than zero, i.e. if it's got one or more available. Then we're going to do if equipment is consumable. So if this checkbox here is ticked, then it's a consumable item. If it's a consumable item and there's more than one, or there's at least one, then write the message that our character uses the item and it's consumable. Then we're going to adjust the value of units to units minus one. So db set value, node button, which is this node, the field equipment units, which is this field. It's a number data type, and we're going to set it to the current number minus one. Nice and easy. Now, if it's not consumable, we simply write that the character uses the equipment. If there is not more than zero units, then we will write that the character has no equipment left. And then we'll write the message. So let's go and have a look at that on the character sheet. All right, so under equipment, we've got a couple of equipment items. We've got a potion of health. We won't look at that one just at the moment. We've got a flask of oil and some rope. So we're gonna say that the rope is generally reusable. So it's not consumable. Of course, the gem might 
say that you have to leave your rope tied to the tree at the top of the cliff that you scale down. Um, in that case, you'll remove it from your character sheet. Um, flasks of oil are generally consumable. So you throw a flask of oil, set it as a fire, um, and then a unit of it of that is consumed. Okay, so we're going to double click on flask of oil and we can see here that Gudgeon uses flask of oil and it's consumable and the count has gone from two to one. We'll do it again. Gudgeon uses flask of oil consumable. Now there's none left. We'll do it again. And Gudgeon has no flask of oil left. We may add something in here to delete these um, when the count is zero. For the moment, that's not part of this video. Next, we've got an item that we've got one of, and it is not a consumable, it's a rope. So when we double click on this one, we just get Gudgeon uses rope. Okay, and he can use that as many times as he wants. Okay, that's it. These are also, of course, drag and droppable to different character sheets, and also uh, to, we can load up the equipment tab, and you're building out a library. You can copy this across and they can be then copied into other character sheets as well. And rope. Okay, so if we wanted to drag these across to uh, our other character, uh, it would be very straightforward. We can give him a potion of health, some flasks of oil, and we'll make that two flasks of oil. All right, that's it for today's video. Once again, thank you for joining me. I hope you're getting some value out of these, and I really, really look forward to seeing some of the work that you guys have done. Um, I have seen a Mithras rule set put out this week, which was just fantastic news. Um, somebody who's been watching some of these videos, some of the earlier videos, and uh, been using the rule set wizard, and they've created a really fantastic uh, rule set um, for the Mithras uh, game, which is uh, basically a derivative of the RuneQuest or basic role-playing RuneQuest system, and that's awesome to see. All right, see you guys soon.